10 essential tricks that could save you hours of work. Let's take 40 seconds to describe what UVs are and what unwrapping is. In 3D space, you have X, Y, and Z to describe where things are, while in 2D texture space, those X and Y axes usually get referred to as U and V. But really, we all know it's still just X and Y. It even says so in the property sidebar of the UV image editor. Simply put, UVs are just positions saying what faces of the object should have what part of the texture. Unwrapping is the process of laying out our 3D geometry into that 2D space. When laying everything out flat, we're simply trying to use as fewer cuts as possible with the least amount of stretching as possible, while balancing that with trying not to have much empty wasted space on the texture. Basically, like the sort of papercraft templates you might find in a program like Pepakura Designer. By the way, there is also an export papercraft model add-on for Blender. The first tip is an easy one, but it's easy to miss and it's not on by default, and that's generated UVs. What you need to remember is, at the moment you create an object, and only at the moment you create an object, you have your toolbox you can see at the bottom of the tool shelf. Or you can hit F6 and you'll get that construction info at the location of the cursor. Almost all of the mesh objects have a little option for generate UVs. In version 2.78, all except the Taurus and Suzanne the monkey. In Blender 2.79, they all now have UVs, and the generated sphere UVs from 2.78 left a little to be desired. Now they're way more useful. In fact, these are especially useful for using when baking out planet textures. You may remember the Cycles Baking chapter to give you some way faster renders for heavy procedural materials. To be able to bake, you need a texture and some UVs to bake to. For planets, this is a really easy way to get UVs onto a sphere. Just select the generated UVs checkbox. Let's get deep into the UV weeds and some fundamentals on how UVs are actually handled within Blender. So there's two major ways we can think about our approach and that's to use seams or not. So I have this cube with all six faces selected and we can see there aren't any UVs. So with our cursor in the 3D view, let's press U to bring up our UV mapping menu and then let's just select the top option unwrap and now we have some UVs. They do appear to be all stacked on top of each other at the moment though, so let's go Control p to pack them into a unique space on the map. And let's just increase our margin slightly so we can really see some separation there. So that's a reasonable result for what we have, there's not exactly any stretching on either of these faces. But there is basically a seam on every single edge now, even though we didn't actually input any seams into it in the first place. Now if you have a fairly complicated object and you don't really know where you want your seams, then what we could try first instead is maybe press U and then try a smart UV project. We have some options here to kind of finesse the process there, but I'll set this at default values apart from just give the island margin a little bit extra and then click OK. And you can see it basically gives us the same result. Now if we were happy with that, we could come down to our UVs menu and choose to go seams from islands. And if we just deselect everything with A, you can see we have all these red lines now on our mesh, which is showing us where our seams are. So this is how we can kind of combine using seams and not using seams but there's not really very much point in doing it on this cube like this. So let's select them all with the A key, go Control E this time to bring up our edges menu, and we can clear the seam from here as well. Something that we can also do is try coming over to the tool shelf and selecting shading UVs, and you can see you have a little UV set of tools here. And now let's try unwrapping this cube a little bit more cleanly, or efficiently, since with more seams, there's more chance of having some sort of texture issues a little bit later down the line. And also, if we were taking this into a game, the more seams that we have, the basically the more memory that this object is taking up, and it's not really as efficient as it could be. So let's go Control tab to bring up our mesh select mode, select our edges, Let's select this edge, this edge, and this edge for starters, and then just imagine that we're taking some scissors and we're basically cutting through it there and allowing Blender to lay out the 3D geometry flat whilst taking those seams into consideration. So let's go Control E and Mark Seam, or of course just use this Mark Seam from the tool shelf. Let's select everything with A and then press U and now unwrap. Now again, it's done a reasonable job, but as you can see, the size of this face down here is not really going to be very high resolution on this texture compared to the amount of space that the other faces are being given. So let's make a few more cuts or seams as it were. So let's come down to the options tab this time. And what I'd like to do is just do some live unwrapping. That way I don't have to keep pressing U and then unwrap. And as soon as we mark a seam, it'll unwrap it for us. So let's maybe go control tab, switch to edge select mode, select this edge and shift select this edge. And let's go control E and mark seam. And now we have this kind of thing. Let's now grab this edge, control E, mark seam. 
and this edge, control E, mark seam, and that's starting to look pretty good. Let's grab this edge, press V to try and stitch, and press enter, and then let's grab this edge here, press V, and then enter to stitch that, and then let's select them all, and then go control P to just pack them in. And then let's reduce our margin just so it uses as much space as it can. So there's some fundamental UV unwrapping ideas within Blender, but this is just on a cube. This is kind of easy stuff. So let's tap back into object mode so that we can delete it with the X key. Let's go shift A and let's add a more interesting object into the scene with our monkey. Let's tab into edit mode, press U, and now let's see what happens when we go unwrap now with no seams whatsoever. Well, we get something interesting. The two eyes have shown up there and then believe it or not, but this over here is an ear. This over here is an ear, that's the mouth, that's an eye socket, and this is the other eye socket. So the reason I know that is because I've done this before and it for some reason tickles me. But anyway, this brings us to another way in which we can work with UVs, which is the way that we're gonna visualize them. So we can work with them like this. So whatever parts of this mesh we have selected, we get to see the UVs in the UV image editor. But sometimes if we're looking at the whole UV map, so let's press A to select everything, and we're kind of curious as to what maybe those faces belong to, exactly where they are on the mesh. It's kind of hard to work that out. So we have this other option down here, which is the keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync. When we do that, it doesn't matter that we have everything selected anymore, so we can deselect everything with A, and we still get to see our UVs. And now if we select these faces here, we can say they actually correspond to just above the eye there. And it also helps to expose just how bizarre that unwrapping actually is. So what we can do is we can select everything with A and press U, and then instead, probably best to start with something like Smart UV Project. So let's go OK. And while that's not great, it does give us a little bit of a place to start and potentially, depending on how important this object is, that might be good enough for the unwrap. This does give us a chance to discuss a little bit of a limitation with our keeping the mesh and the UVs within sync here. And that's if we go control tab and select our vertices, for example, this vertex and this vertex. And let's say we thought to ourselves, well, we want all of these vertices, in fact, all those UVs there to be nice and straight. So what we can do is press S and then X and we have a problem since the vertices we have selected have UVs that belong in multiple UV islands. So if we go control L to select our linked, you see that we get another issue as well, which is the select linked only works in the face select mode. So just to deal with this kind of thing, you're gonna to need to switch to face select mode, shift select them all, or select one and then go control L to select the linked. Now that we're in face select mode, control L to select linked actually works. Isolate them, or in other words, just hide everything else. So shift H. And now what we can do is control tab, go back to our vertex select mode, press A to deselect everything, and then press C to enter into circle select mode, which allows us to sort of paint selection. And then I can just left click and drag across those, right click to get out of that mode. And now what we can do is press S, X, and zero and then we have the all those straightened. In fact, let's just show one more way to do that. Let's go Control Z to undo and press W instead to just do an automatic align. And it does basically the same thing. Now we'll go Alt H to unhide everything. And you can see the rest of the UVs aren't completely ruined like they would have been before. Follow active quads. This is a great one for twisted curved pipes and wires. Remember the Taurus in 2.78 didn't have any generated UVs while in 2.79, or at least this current daily build anyway, we do. Here's how we would create them for ourselves, and if you've followed the wormhole tutorial, you'll already know how to go about this. If we tab into edit mode, and first go control tab to switch to edge select mode, alt right click this edge loop, and let's say one of the ones just here, shift alt right click this to add that loop to the current selection, then let's go control E to bring up our edges menu, and then let's mark those as seams. A, and then A again, to make sure we have everything, press U to bring up the unwrap menu, and let's select unwrap. Whether we choose angle based or conformal based, we're not really getting what we want. And this is where our follow active quads comes into it. So first, to use our follow active quads, it's gonna need an example face with some UVs on to take as input. Or in other words, we're telling Blender how we want all the other UVs to look like based on the face we have selected. So to get something nice and even, let's just reset them. So I'm gonna go U and then reset at the bottom there. Now every face has been made to fit the whole space of our UV map here. Now currently it looks like this one with a slightly different shading is the active face and that's fine. 
Let's go U and then follow active quads. And then either of these options are fine. I'm going to just select even and then select OK. And then I'm just going to pack that with Control P. I don't need any margin whatsoever, so I'm going to take that down to zero. And you can see that's just currently using a quarter of the space on the Y axis. So let's go S to scale Y and then four to scale that up. And then again, Control P to just pack that in. Pinning and unfolding. Say we've got the small area of a scene done like this top of a building, just this little corner that we have here, and it's really simple stuff. I've just got this single plane, for example, which just makes up this floor area. If I go shift space to minimize the view, I'm using the UV editing window layout, by the way. We can see we've got options to see our UVs here, so I'm gonna tab into edit mode, and there's the UVs for this ground plane. Now let's say we wanna extrude this out a little bit. Let's go control tab just to make sure we're in edge select mode. Right select this edge, press E to extrude it, and then X to constrain it along the X axis. Left click to drop it into position, and you can see we get all these streaky lines. Because the face for these UVs is basically bunched up really tight, as thin as this edge going along the bottom there. Now let's say we want to unwrap this, but we want these to stay perfectly into position. So what we want to do is just make sure this stuff doesn't move. So I'm going to go Control tab and select the face here. And then I'm going to come over to the UV image editor and press P to pin those UVs. Now it doesn't really look like anything's happened, so it might be best to now switch to vertex select mode, so control tab to do that. And you can see the vertices here have now they've got these little red squares on each corner. So now if we select everything, just press A a couple of times to do that, and then press E in the UV image editor to unwrap, you can see that those stay in position and now we get the correct proportions for this new face that we've got. Or if we wanna go control Z just to undo that, we can actually do the same thing in this window and just press U and then unwrap. That's just basically exactly the same thing. Now to unpin them, we just need to now go Alt P. For a bit more of an explanation on pinning and unwrapping, you can check out this old tutorial on cgmasters.net. Multi-object editing. Here I've got these two objects in the scene. I have this monkey mesh and I've got the base for it to sit on. They don't have any textures on here. This is just using a matte cap material for the moment. But they do both have some UVs. So if we tab into edit mode and select all the faces, you can see that our UV layout looks like that. And for the monkey mesh, it looks like this. Now, what if we wanted both of these objects to share the same texture and we didn't want the UVs to overlap? What we can do is select the base object, then shift select the monkey mesh, tab into edit mode. We can see our UVs for the monkey mesh, but we can't see the UVs for our base object. But if we were to come down to the view menu and draw other objects, then you can see in the background there, if we border select across these with the B key and just move them out of the way, there's our UVs for the base object. Now, a quick tip here is if we come over to the user preferences, find our themes tab, come over to the UV image editor. We've got our other object UVs color swatch here. And here we can basically change this to whatever we want. And then we can just exit and carry on manipulating our UVs. So now we can scale these down maybe with the S key, G to move them into position. And now they're in a unique position on our texture map. One of the downsides to this is we can't really interact with the UVs of our other objects. If we wanted to snap and align to other UV positions that we can see on our base object here, we can't really do that at the moment. But we'll talk about that a little bit more very shortly. So right now I'm in Blender 2.78. And I want to point out a quick behavior change between 2.78 and the upcoming 2.79. And that's if we come down here and press the new button to create a new texture. So let's just call this texture and then we'll make this a color grid and then just press OK. And what we can see here, there's our UVs. But even though we still have draw other objects on, you can see there are no UVs showing for our base mesh. Now this is because it's only the other objects that share the same texture within our UV image window here that are gonna show up together. So if we were to tab out of edit mode and select the base object on its own, tab into edit mode, and then come down and find that texture, select it from the list, tab back into object mode, shift select the monkey head, tab into edit mode again, and now we can see faintly there's our outline for the UVs back again. All right, so I've jumped into an early version of 2.79, and I'll just want to show you the differences here. So let's just step back a bit. So let's select the base object, tab into edit mode. I'm just going to get rid of this texture by clicking on the little X icon there. And then let's tab back into object mode, shift select the monkey mesh, and then tab into edit mode again. And then you can see, again, we have, despite the draw other objects option enabled, only the UVs for the active object are showing up. Now, what we have now is that we can press N to bring up our property sidebar 
and you'll see a little section down here, the draw other objects option. And we can now have this filter, whether we want it only to show same image or whether we don't want it filtered at all. We just want to show all the UVs. And when we select that all there, you can see now the UVs have shown up again. So I think that's a really handy feature as previously that could cause quite a lot of confusion. All right, so I'm back in version 2.78. And now let's think about if we actually did want to snap some UVs of this object to this object or align them or something like this. The best option that we have right now is an add-on by ND85. You can download it from here. And by the way, Andreas has been working on some seriously cool stuff elsewhere. For example, the B Painter add-on, which is definitely worth looking into and everything he touches basically. So it's definitely worth supporting. So if we open up into our user preferences, come over to the add-ons and then let's just type in UV and then there's our multi-object UV editing. I've already been through the steps to install this, though it is very simple. You just download the zip file, unzip it, find the .py file and then just install from file here, find that .py file and then it'll show up in this list. Once this is enabled, what we can do is press the T key to show our tool shelf. And now let's shift select the monkey mesh and you see the UV tools pops up now with this little option. Now, just before I do that, I'm just going to split this window over here, left click and drag from the top right and switch that over to a properties window and come over to the modifiers because both of these objects have modifiers on. This has got a subsurf modifier. This one has got a bevel and a subsurf modifier set to two iterations. This one's set to three in the view. So if I select this object and then shift select the monkey mesh and then go to multi object UV editing, you can see that's going to sh change the shape of the base object quite a bit. But now at least what we can do is get in there and manipulate our UVs. So for example, we want to select them, press W, maybe align auto. And now they're both aligned horizontally. Once we're finished with that, we can just tab back into object mode and everything is returned back the way it was. We have this bevel and subsurf modifier here and we have this one, which has just got the subsurf modifier modifier on. So if that's what you need, I think that's definitely worth checking out. So many thanks to Andreas to making that awesomeness available to everyone. Animated UVs. If you've seen the wormhole tutorial, you'll definitely already know all about this. The best and most versatile way to control animated UVs is with the warp UVs modifier. So let's give ourselves some geometry. Shift A, mesh plane. I'll hit F6 to take a look at our construction info here and I'm going to select generate UVs. Let's tab into edit mode. There's our UVs. Let's give this a texture so we can see what's going on. Click on the new button there and then let's change that to a color grid and then click OK. Let's zoom out a little bit and so that we can see that texture on our geometry. Let's just go for a simple textured solid option in our property tool shelf. So N to open this up and there we can find textured solid under the shading area. And I'm going to close that again with the N key. So I've got my red X axis line that you can see going from left to right on the screen. And our X axis is going from left to right on the UV image editor as well. So I'm going to align these so that they look basically the same. So we want A1 to A8 happening at the bottom of this as well. So I'm going to press A in the UV image editor to select all our UVs and then just go R90 just to rotate that round. All right, so let's tab back into object mode, come over to the modifiers, click on the add modifier pull down list and we can find UV warp right there. Now all this needs is a from and a to. So let's click on the plane as the from and now we're going to need a second object for our two, but we don't have any other objects. So let's create one. Let's go shift A and add in an empty for this plane axes will do. Reselect our plane and then select in the two field the empty. If we had multiple UV maps, we would want to specify that here, but there's no harm in being extra precise here, just selecting it anyway. And now with everything else at default, we can select our empty and then just simply select one of the axes here or just press G and then X. And then we can see we're now moving it along the horizontal axis or G and Y to push it forwards and backwards. We can also scale with the S key and press R to rotate them around as well. And it's really as simple as that. And if you want a more practical example, as stated earlier, feel free to warp over to the wormhole tutorial where we'll be warping through that wormhole with the warp modifier. And that's well more uses of the word warp than we really need. So let's warp on to the next chapter. Let's take a look at transferring the UV maps from one object to another. It's actually pretty common to model first and then unwrap and texture. So often you'll find yourself with a scene with scattered objects that are basically the same thing, but we now want to try and copy UVs from one object to the other. They might have subtle differences. So for example, let's go shift A and get a mesh in the scene here. I'm going to use the monkey mesh. 
press T to open up the tool shelf and I've got the generated UVs option selected because I'm cheekily in an early build of 2.79 again to do that. So I'm gonna then press T to close that tool shelf and then tab into edit mode and there's our UVs. And then as you can see, we had that color grid already created. So I'm gonna place that in the background of our UVs there. And now because we have our shading textured solid option on, so when we're in solid shading mode, we can see the texture in the back of our UVs there. It gives us this fairly even lighting to be able to easily unwrap in. So now we have one monkey object there. Let's go Shift D, Z to move it up a little bit. And now we have this one. Maybe these were some crazy bricks in a wall or gargoyles on a post or something. And we'd very subtly change the locations of its topology. So for example, just a little bit of an air tweak. And now let's say we've painstakingly unwrapped this one. And this one has very, very basic UVs. For example, this. So I've just pressed E in the UV image editor, which is the same as going U and then unwrap and it's given us that crazy unwrapping that we saw earlier. And now what we basically want to do is copy the UVs from this object to this object. And it's pretty simple. All we need to do is shift select this one. We want the active object to be the one with the good UVs. We wanna then go control L to make links and we want transfer UV maps, which is at the bottom. And then once we select our target object again, tab a couple of times just to refresh it. You can see it's updated its UVs and it saved us a lot of time having to unwrap this a second time. Now let's say we tabbed into edit mode and we made a bit more of a significant change. So for example, control R to create an edge loop here. And then I'll just left click to drop that into position with a slight edge slide. And then in fact, let's pull it out of the socket a little bit further like this. And now let's try our transfer UV map operation again. So what I'll do is make sure that the one with the good UVs is the one selected last, and then I'll go Control L and then Transfer UV Maps. And then, uh-oh, we have this warning up here saying that basically if we pull that down, because it goes pretty quick, let's just pull that down and take a look in our info window. The object that we're trying to copy UVs to is basically different. It has a different amount of loops. So unfortunately for that, it's not gonna work. This is where we bring out the big guns. What we're gonna do here is rely on a modifier. So let's come over to the modifiers tab, add modifier, data transfer. And then from the list, let's choose our Suzanne and then also choose the face corner. Let's pull this out a little bit more actually. Face corner detail where we can see UVs as an option. And now here we have everything turned black. And what I found in this case is what we need really is something where a lot of the shading has been made smooth. So let's tab into edit mode, select everything with A, go control F, and then we want to shade smooth and then tap back into object mode. And now it appears to be working a lot better. Now, as we can see, there are some UVs on this, but they do look a little bit crazy. And that's because it's based on world position. So if we take a look at this icon over here, it's basically saying the evaluate source and destination measures in global space. So if we press G and start to move this around, you can see the closer it gets to our source mesh, the kind of cleaner it looks. But thankfully, because we've got that button, we can just uncheck it and use its local space instead. And now you can see we have a little bit of red on the top. We have a little bit of gold over here, green. We have these sorts of pink and purple eyes. So for the most part, this is looking pretty clean. And the method that we're using here is based on nearest corner and matching face normal, it looks like. Now let's just scroll through and see what we've got. We've got projected face interpolated. Now at the top, it's not looking so good. I'm gonna hold control and middle mouse wheel down and then we get we can scroll through these pretty easily. Now this one is looking pretty good uh, for the most part, but we have an issue there. Let's scroll down again. Nearest corner of nearest face is still ignoring the issue there. Let's go down again. And then these two are pretty much similar, but the matching normal isn't working very well for us. So I'm going to just leave it at matching face normal instead. Now with that, let's click apply and then tab into edit mode. And we can see we've got some pretty decent UVs, even with the different topology that we have. So let's alt right click this edge loop here, the new one that we created and take a look at where it is. And it's basically, it's snapped to the nearest other UVs that it could find during the data transfer. And so things have kind of squished up a little bit and that could look a little bit better. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do is go control plus on the numpad, just to expand our selection there. Let's go over to the mesh data tab and we'll click plus for a new vertex group. Now let's just call this UV fix and then we'll click assign. Now these selected vertices have full strength in this group. Now let's come back over to the modifiers, add another data transfer modifier, find our Suzanne, and then it's the face corner data, UVs, and let's tab back into object mode, press number one, 
to take a look from the front or the graphic view. Make sure that we're looking in local space. And in fact, let's just zoom in a little bit on that eye area. And let's control middle mouse wheel through the options here until we have something which seems to work. And right there, as we went projected face interpolated, it looked a lot better. The problem is, of course, that it's destroyed everything else. So this is why we have down here, there's the option to put our UV fix in. And now it's only going to apply those changes to those vertices that we had in that vertex group. So with that, I'm going to click apply and then tab back into object mode. And now it seems that even those are nicely arranged for us. Let's jump into an early preview build of 2.79 again now and take a look at a cool new add-on that will be included called Magic UV. Let's switch this UV image editor over to the user preferences and find our add-ons tab. I'm going to filter all our categories to be just show us the UV related add-ons. Here's our Magic UV add-on and once you open this up you'll see that we've got all these preferences and a link for more information definitely worth checking out. And many thanks to Nutty, the main developer, I believe, and all of these guys for contributing to this awesome tool set and making it all available to the community. This is really awesome stuff. So a little further down, we'll see this is where we'll find all the tools. Let's switch this back to a UV image editor. All I really wanted to point out was that this add-on exists now. But also, I just want to point out a couple of features. For example, the bounding box scaling. So let's press N to open up the property sidebar. Let's press B and border select across this UV island. And down at the bottom here, we've got display UV bounding box. When we do that, you get all these little square points that make up this larger square. And what we can do now is click on one of the little points. So for example, this one in the corner, and that's going to allow us to left click and drag in towards the opposite corner. And we kind of get this little squash and stretch ability with our UVs. Uh, we also have this point at the top, which we can rotate around. And when we do that, we still have our UV bounding box for which to squish kind of maybe constrained straight down or grab another corner and squish into the opposite corner again. Once we're done with it, we can click on hide UV bounding box and then we can carry on as we were. And just as an aside, in a kind of similar vein, we do actually have option to change our pivot down here as well. So we can change to the 2D cursor, for example, which is this thing right here. We can left click to drop it into position and then press S and then we can scale towards that location. And if we want to get really precise on that, we can actually zero out values here. So 860 by 640, for example, to get it right on the grid. But this UV bounding box scaling is also very cool and we can just leave that at its default. Let's deselect these with the A key and zoom in a little bit and just show off another feature. So let's select that edge down here, which is this area above the mouth. And let's press U to bring up our UV mapping menu. And here we have move the UV from view 3D. So when we left click this, the edge that we have selected, nothing really seems to happen at first. But if we left click to confirm that we want to get moving the UVs on this edge, when we now move our mouse around, you can see while the cursor is actually in the 3D view, it's definitely updating that position of the UVs in the 2D window on the right hand side as well, which means we can go shift space and just maximize the view here. And let's maybe come up to this area, for example. And let's say we just, for some reason, wanted this edge here on the UV grid to be aligned with this particular edge. What we could do is go Control Tab, let's switch over to Vertex Select Mode, since this works in many of the modes, and then select this vertex, press U, go to move the UV from View 3D, and then left click to confirm, and let's put one point there, and then do the same with this point. So U, move the UV from View, left click to confirm, and I'm gonna place that one to be about there, like this, and then we're done. So we never had to go into the UV image editor during that process. So let's go shift space to minimize the view again. And then let's take a look up and you can see, of course, there's our UVs aligned with that edge. If we wanted more precision though, of course, we could just go W and align auto now that they're roughly into position anyway. Or I guess if we really wanted things to be precise, we could actually just key in numerical values anyway. So let's scroll up to the top here. We have 384.46 there. If we change that to 384.5 instead you can see it's now smack bang in the middle there and that's just another little quick uv tip thrown in for free why not it's kind of an easy one anyway so again many thanks for the contributors of this add-on there's some very cool stuff in here and well worth the look and the final tip not using uvs at all let's dig into the cycles render engine and it's box mapping so here I am in Cycles Rendering. I'm set to Rendered View at the moment, and you can see I've got this simple cylinder geometry in the scene, and it just has this diffuse shader on it. 
Down here on the bottom right, we have the UV image editor. And that's just to show you what the grunge texture that I've brought into it looks like in 2D. And now since we have the node wrangler add-on enabled, we can just select this diffuse shader and go control T and that will set us up the image texture node the vector mapping node and the texture coordinates node. Now you can see it's set to UVs, but this object doesn't have any UVs at the moment. And besides, it's all kind of pink anyway. And that's let us know that we don't have a texture in here at the moment. So let's delete this with the X key. And instead, I'm gonna left click and drag from here and drag the grunge texture in there. And now let's hook that up to the vector node. And then let's plug that into the diffuse color channel. Now again, you can't really see anything because this doesn't have any UVs, so it doesn't really know where to place anything. So instead of using the UVs, I'm going to use the object coordinates. So let's plug that in. And now we have something finally in our scene. It's all a bit on the stretchy side. So it's at this point that some people might give up with this and just think, ah, well, okay, we're just going to have to unwrap this. Making sure that we have our seam there with its UVs right at the top so it wraps around nicely with this tiling texture. However, we don't really need to do that. What we could do is set it from flat to box, and that gives us this blend slider. And also the texture now looks a whole lot better going down the main length of the cylinder. But you can see clearly, here's this seam. In fact, let's make it a bit more prominent by just left clicking and dragging across there, scaling it up a bit, so 0.2. And you can see there's very clearly the seam going across there. But with this blend, as you probably guessed, or perhaps even know already, we can just blend our troubles away. And if you want a little bit more of a finer control of this while it not being so noisy in the view, there's a couple of things you can do. One of the probably the most obvious ways to do this is just to switch to material view. And now while the object isn't reflecting the environment around it, which by the way is just this sky texture going into the background there, if we just switch back to the object material nodes, we can now play with this blend slider a little bit and you can see it does actually update in real time. And I'm perfectly happy with it being about there. And that's all we need to do. We've essentially gotten away with not even needing to unwrap this object. Let's press N to bring up our property sidebar, only show the render and have a little look around just to check that we're not cheating ourselves here by leaving any stone unturned or any seam still torn. But this looks fine. So after all that UV tips and tricks, perhaps the way to go sometimes is to actually not even bother with UVs whatsoever. And that wraps us all up, or perhaps I should say unwraps us all up if you think it's the pun. So thanks for joining us in slaying any potential multi-dimensional UV demons in this bonus Space VFX element series by Gleb Alexandrov and me, Adi Burrows.